In today's video, we're going to show you exactly how to rebuild the forks on your Harley Davidson motorcycle to include replacing the fork seals. This is for 2014 and newer Harleys. And don't worry, we also have a tutorial video on pre-2014 models, link in the description below. Welcome back, bikeaholics. Ryan Erlacher here, lawbuddingbiker.com. I always thank you. That's right, you for checking back in. And Hardy says you should do this maintenance every 50,000 miles, but of course, if you see a leak, you should do it right away. So before we get started, there's some things you should know. We're gonna show you how to check the fork oil level, but you should reference a service manual to check for your specific year and model. And there's really only one specialty tool you need for this project. I will put a link in the description below along with the actual fork rebuild kit that we used. Oh, and you'll need about three quarts of fork oil. And the footage for this video was actually taken out of our very detailed Olean's and Progressive front suspension install videos, and I'll link to both of those in the description below. And if you haven't already, make sure you check out the Law Abiding Biker podcast, where we talk about things like this in a lot more detail, and we have a lot of fun doing it. You can listen on any major podcast platform, also link to it in the description below. And with that said, what do you say we get wrenching, huh? But before we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell icon every time those are hit. Another biker joins a revolution, and we'd love to have you be part of it. All right, so the first thing for this project, we've got the bike on a Titan lift. We've got a 1,000 pound Titan mini jack underneath it because we're going to remove the front wheel, fender, fork, stuff like that. Uh, there is no better way to work on your motorcycle than having this Titan lift and mini jack. We do sell it right in the law abiding biker store. We'd love to get one shipping your way. I will link to it in the description below. So with his 15 16 socket there, he's got on a breaker bar, he's going to crack that front axle nut. And with it cracked, you can go ahead and back that nut off and there is a washer behind that. You'll want to save it, of course. And now with the dead blow hammer, he's just going to go in while the bike uh, tire is still on the lift and at least pop that through flush. Now we can jack the bike up. All right, and he's just going around to his mini jack there. And uh, he's going to start jacking that up so we can get this front wheel off the lift for wheel removal. Okay, so before we pop the axle through the rest of the way, we're gonna take off the brake caliper on the left side here. That's a 10 millimeter 12 point socket uh, for those brake caliper bolts that go into the forks there. And he's moving up to the top one. Now for regular front wheel removal, you really only need to remove one. But in this case, we're gonna be removing both forks. And so we're just gonna remove both brake calipers, one on each side for this touring model. And you're just finishing that top one. Of course, that's going to release it. And you've got a wire organizer there too that uh, kind of guides your wires. And he'll just kind of let this uh, dangle for now. And then uh, we'll be able to let it go the rest of the way when we get that speed sensor, ABS sensor out of there. And he's just working on the brake caliper, of course, on the right side here. Same two bolts that he's going to remove. And he got that one free there. He's just working it off the rotor. And you can kind of let that one dangle back there off the engine guards or set it on the brake pedal take a little pressure off that line. All right, so on the left side of the bike here, one thing you'll want to note before you start uh, popping the axle through the rest of the way, you'll notice the black speed sensor that's got a wire on the back side there. It is your ABS speed sensor. And then we'll move over to the other side here. And on this side, you'll want to note between the forks and the wheel is a spacer and you'll see the machined grooved lines go to the outside. You'll want to note that because we'll put it back on the same way. Okay, so now with the wheel off the lift uh, and the brake calipers removed, he's just got a Phillips screwdriver and a dead blow hammer. He's going to push that uh, axle through. You can see it kind of dropped there. And now he can remove that speed sensor out of there. Of course, that dangles the whole caliper. And he's just getting that caliper off the rotor there. And he'll find a place to set that. You can also zip tie it if you want to your crash bars or just set it like he is. All right, now you can... Uh, Pull that axle out the rest of the way. He's going to be supporting the wheel there. Of course, the spacer on that other side drop down. No big deal there. And he can get this tire out from there now. All right, with a quarter inch hex head there on a socket and extension, we're going to remove this fender from the forks. And there's two bolts on both sides. And on the inside, you don't have to worry about it because those nuts are welded on. So you just back the bolts out there. And one on the back side of the fork, one on the front side there. And he's just working on that last one there, of course, supporting his fender. So it doesn't just drop onto the lift. And now he can get that fender out of the way. 
All right, so we're going to remove the fuel tank. It, you don't have to, but uh, it's going to make it a lot easier to work up there at the fork. So remove the seat here is what we're going to do. It's really easy to remove the fuel tank. We're going to show you how here. That's a thumb bolt, one of our extended thumb bolts for the rear seat. Makes it super easy to get off. It is a product from Rick Rack. We sell it right in the Law Abiding Biker store. We've got uh, regular and then extended for your touring to get behind that passenger seat and all that. Makes it super easy. I'll link to everything in the description below. With that, he's going to go ahead, pop the rear of the seat up, slide out that front tongue, and then he's got a wire to contend with because this is my Harley heated hammock. He's going to unplug that and get the seat out of the way. All right, first thing, he's going to pull that vent line. There's one vent line on the right side. It'll probably be zip tied down stock on your bike. So go down there, look for the zip tie. There's another vent line over on this side here, and he can actually disconnect it right there. And got that popped off. Next, he's looking for his gray plug. There's a gray plug underneath the seat there. And he's going to go ahead and push that. And then it pulls right out like that. And on the rear of the tank here are two bolts. They're Torx T40. And he's going to go ahead and back these out. Got that one out there. And he'll move around to the left side of the tank here. And back that one out. Again, Torx T40. Okay, so before we move the front tank bolts, we want to keep it a little bit uh, steady because you got to gotta yank on this fuel line to get it out. Little rag underneath, you are gonna spill just a little bit of fuel, but this is a quick disconnect. He's gonna go ahead and push up on the black bottom portion, pull up on the uh, silver sleeve there, and then pull down on the black fuel line. And he popped it there. You, like I say, you'd lose just a little bit of fuel, but uh, that's disconnected. Okay, and then at the front of your tank, both sides, bolts, there's little rubber covers over it. They just pop off, exposing the bolt there. Torx T40, same as the rear of your tank. Again, one on the left front here and one on the right front, and he'll back these all the way out. All right, finishing up getting this left side out, he'll move around to the right side. And he's just finishing getting that right front tank bolt out. Now that completely frees the tank up, all the lines are undone. He can go ahead and just kind of lift up on the rear and pull back there, and then you can lift a tank out of the way. That'll make it much easier to work and get at those fork cap bolts up here and clamps. All right, and then uh, on both sides of your lower inner dash cover here is a Torx T27 bolt, left and right side. All right, and you're just moving around to the other side, and uh, he'll get that bolt out of the way. All right, so what you want to do now is stock here. This is stock, and he's going to go ahead and remove that big plug there. It's just a push tab, and then you pull it out. You're going to have one of those on both sides, and then whatever other accessories that you... Uh, have plugged in and we can rock that out of the way there. All right, so what you wanna do now is stock here. This is stock and he's gonna go ahead and remove that big plug there. It's just a push tab and then you pull it out. You're gonna have one of those on both sides and then whatever other accessories that you uh, have plugged in and we can rock that out of the way there. All right, and so to make it easy to get this inner dash panel off, we're gonna actually remove the ignition here. And he's going to go ahead and turn it to the fork lock position. All right, so he's going to go ahead and put his key in. And he's going to turn that all the way counterclockwise. At the same time, he's got a screwdriver and he's using a flathead there. He's pushing up on a button there underneath. At the same time, he's turning that ignition. He's pushing down now. The button is up there. And now he can go ahead and lift this whole ignition off. Just be sure to take it straight off and don't turn it. You don't want to misalign your ignition. Now he's going to take the spring off there. All right, and so he's going to take that uh, top nut off. Channel locks is all you need, and you can see it unthreads there, and these only go back on one way. And then he'll take the lower collar off there. All right, and on each side of that inner dash panel, Torx T25, there's a bolt on left and right side, and that's what he's removing here on the left side. And just moving around and getting this right side one out. All right, and with those two uh, screws removed, you can go ahead and pull this inner dash panel out. He will have some plugs to contend with here. All right, just got some deadheaded plugs there. They're just in caps, and you just push the tab and pull those out. Or you may have accessories. Whatever you have, you'll need to unplug. All right, and then he's just got his main gauge plug there, and it's got tabs on each side. He's just prying up with a screwdriver, popping those There we go. All right, so now this deadheaded plug on the other side, uh, it's kind of hard to get to. But uh, there's a tab up underneath there, um, just like the other side, but it's at the top this time. It's easier to get in there with a screwdriver and pop that one. So now there's two sets of clamps. You've got your mid clamps for the forks. There's two bolts down there. And then at the top, there's one bolt. Again, that clamps the forks 
uh, or the fork left side into position there. That's a quarter inch hex head. And he's gonna go ahead and break that top one and start backing it out. Now, no big deal here because you've still got your mid clamps uh, supporting the fork and he's gonna go ahead and at least break those and get them started there. Now for the next part, it helps to have a partner because as he's loosening those, the fork's gonna want to drop out and we don't want it dropping on the lift. So having a partner up front while you're loosening those and guiding the fork out is very helpful. And so same thing on the right fork is just have that partner and uh, loosen those uh, inner clamps up and guide that fork out of the way. All right, so now we're at a point where we're gonna remove the fork cap bolt. Uh, in this particular 14 street light special, um, it's actually a hex head and it's a 19 millimeter, which we have. On some of your other bikes, it'll actually be a fork cap uh, nut head. And uh, you can use a crescent wrench or an appropriate size wrench or a fork cap wrench itself. Uh, at any rate, we're gonna, remember this is under extreme pressure. So all we're doing right now is just breaking it. So I'm gonna hold this the best I can. Definitely helps to have two hands here. He's putting his 19 millimeter in there. All right, and he's getting it broke and that's good right there. Uh, just a couple threads. All right, so this is just a piece of metal. It's actually a part from a fork, uh, vice fork clamp to work on forks, but use whatever you have. But basically the easiest way to do this, again, under high pressure, because it's under a load of a spring. So you want to obviously be safe about it. Don't get it in the face. So when he's doing this, he's going to have his face backed off. But he's going to be basically holding the fork cap bolt, and I'm going to turn the fork underneath him. And so he's going to put pressure down there. And so I'm actually just turning the fork clockwise. That's allowing the uh, bolt to come out there. And I see it coming. And he's just gonna keep holding pressure down on it. And you see we released it and you can easily let all that pressure, but that's how much pressure is on there. You've got your spacer, of course, your cap, and then the spring down there. All right, and so now uh, we've got the fork cap bolt off and he's gonna set that aside. He's gonna remove the stock spacer there. He's just got a tub because there's oil in here, of course. He's gonna reach in and remove the stock spring there. And any tools we talk about in this video, uh, like the uh, fork clamp vise tool, we'll uh, link to it in the description below. No additional cost to you, but if you click through any of those links and uh, make a purchase, we do get a small commission. Helps keep the lights on here at the channel. And now he can go ahead and turn that over and he's gonna dump the oil out into our oil pan there. All right, so for this bike, it's a 14 uh, Street Glide Special. It's got a 12 millimeter hex head, and you can see you need a long one to get up in there. Some of the older bikes pre-2014 were six millimeter, but he's gonna go ahead and back this out. He already broke it, but he's gonna back it out the rest of the way. You can turn the fork up, and he's got it in his hand there. So now that that bottom bolt is out, we can go ahead and he's gonna turn it over there and get the rest of the components out. He is going to save that top out spring there though, because we will reuse that. All right, so inside here uh, where the top fork tube meets the lower portion, there's a uh, retaining ring in there. And the easiest way to take those out is just get a screwdriver in there and pry up. And we've got new ones of these with our rebuild kit. He's just working his way around and we got that popped. So this is our Jim's Vice fork clamp tool. Makes it super easy to work on your forks. And I will link to this tool in the description below. You can see he's just tightening it down there. All right, now that that's clamped down, uh, he's gonna go ahead and remove the lower from the upper and it just takes a little bit of force there. There we go. As you can see, it came apart there. So this came out of the very bottom of the fork when we took it apart. And uh, you can see it's got some machine lines on it there, but you'll want to retain this because we will be reusing it. All right, so now the uh, fork tube is in the clamp there. We're ready to remove all the hardware and we will be removing it off the bottom of the fork tube here. And so now he can just take that metal band and slide it off the end there. So underneath that is another metal band and it's got a slit in it too. This one won't slide right off, so you have to pry it apart with a screwdriver to get it to clear over the lip there. And then of course, his next washer there ring comes off and then the uh, rubber ring comes off. 
All right, so in our rebuild kit, of course, comes a new rubber ring. He's putting just a little fork oil on it, lubing it up, and there are letters on one side of that. Make sure the letter side goes up, and he can slide that over. And next, he'll go on with his uh, just regular metal ring there. All right, now he'll go on with that first split ring there. Spread it apart, work it into place there. There is a channel for it. And last, he'll go over with that last split ring, and it just slides right over the top of the other one there. And then it can slide everything together. And we now have new fork seals. Okay, so because we took the forks apart to do fork seals, uh, if you didn't take your forks apart, uh, you won't necessarily have to worry about this. It won't come out, but it did come out for us. This is your fork stop, stock one, and we're gonna reuse it. And you see how it's open on one end, uh, or one end is bigger than the other, that goes to the upside. And if you look down in that fork, there's actually a channel down in there. And that's where we wanna get it into. So he's gonna go ahead and drop that in and he's looking down in there to make sure and wiggle it into place so it sits flush in that uh, channel and cut out in there all right just real quick and we'll get right back into your video as you can imagine a lot of man hour expenses and effort go into keeping this channel going strong of course there's a way you can support us by becoming a patron member i will link to it in the description below. There are benefits for becoming a member such as t-shirts and stickers. You get access to the private Facebook group which is a troll free zone, nothing but bikers helping bikers. You get access to live video broadcasts and chat podcasts early, premium videos, and of course access to those ride, meetup, and events. We appreciate you considering becoming a member. All right, let's get back into your video. All right, and now with the uh, upper tube, you can go ahead and put it into the lower there. And of course, we've got our new hardware and our new fork seal, and he'll slide that into place and push the rubber ring down into the channel there. All right, so this is a, a fork seal driver kit uh, that we use, and I'll link to it in the description below if you wanna pick one up. It's nice because it has all different size uh, inserts in there for different size forks. He's pulling out the 49 to 50 millimeter for us, plastic inserts because on these uh, 2014 is a 49 millimeter forks. It's got the actual driver there. And uh, you'll see how he puts this together. It's just got tabs on it. You just line them up. There's a channel in there, pretty simple. And then he'll do the same with the other side. And then he actually slides those around the upper tube there. And there's nipples and a hole and he lines that up. And now his uh, fork seal driver is in place and he can drive this uh, seal down in there. And this assures that it gets down in there nice and level and flush. All right, so we've got that fork seal back in place there. We're gonna go back. This also came in our rebuild kit, but you can reuse your stock one there. But uh, this is a uh, spring clip there. And on that fork seal, when you're driving it down there, you wanna drive it down far enough. It will bottom out eventually, but uh, you wanna drive it down far enough so it is below that channel because that uh, snap ring goes into the channel. So obviously you need to get it lower than that so it exposes it, allowing you to get that snap ring into place. Next, you can put the top out spring in the fork tube followed by the damper rod. All right, so in his hand, he's got the fork damper bolt. He's gonna put a little blue Loctite on it. You'll probably be reusing yours, but if you do a fork rebuild and seals like we did, it came with a new bolt and crush washer. He's taking his 19 millimeter hex head there and he's gonna get it up in there and start getting it threaded in. So to get that fork damper bolt started, it just wants to spin the inside. So it definitely helps to have a second set of hands and you can actually pull out on the upper tube all the way out. And uh, that kind of sets it a bit so that you can get that bolt started and get everything sucked together. And this part helps to have a second set of hands too, or you can put it in the fork clamp, of course. But uh, 30 to 37 foot pounds, we're gonna torque this damper bolt down. All right, so next we need to put oil in the fork. And uh, basically we want, for my weight, we want 140 millimeters of air gap space. Now the air gap space is what will be between the top of your oil and the fork cap bolt or nut. On my Hardy Street Glide Special, the stock front forks take about 24 ounces of fork oil and they call for 95 millimeters of air gap space. Please check for the exact specifications of your year and model. And uh, so all we've done is taken a rod we had sitting around the shop. You can use anything, a dowel rod, whatever. And we've marked out with a mark 140 millimeters. And uh, so uh, we can use that rod. And uh, while I'm uh, holding the fork for lurch, you want the top tube in the down position. It's just resting on the lift. And uh, with it in the down position, um, I will hold the rod in there and he will be filling to try to get it to the bottom of the rod there. And now he's just gonna work that upper tube nice and slow, about 10 times up and down. 
and you can hear it and we're just working the fluid down into there and we're getting rid of the air so 10 times on that upper tube and once that's done we can check our oil level all right so we uh topped it back off to the 140 40 millimeters air gap space and he's going to go ahead and do some pumping again just to make sure all the air is out of this thing and you'll be able to hear it when you have all the air out because it'll stop making sounds and bubbling as you go up and down all right so now that we have no air and we can hear nothing we're going to go ahead a final time and we're going to top it off and measure it to that 140 millimeters and we'll be good to go Next, you can put your main spring back in, followed by the spacer. From there, you can replace the fork cap bolt in the same manner as we showed you to take it off. All right, so we're gonna go back in with the forks now. We're gonna start with the left side. Now there's a bevel at the top of your fork tube. You see that bevel? When you're putting these back in, you want your top clamp, the uh, top of the clamp, um, to basically be somewhere midway uh, on that bevel. So they'll just sit slightly above the top lip of the uh, clamp. All right, so the easiest way to do this is definitely to have a second set of hands and one person can slide the uh, fork and tube up into the mid clamps and upper clamp while the other person on the inside is starting to tighten those bolts down and making sure again that we have the top of that fork lined up with the clamp appropriately. All right, and with a quarter inch uh, hex head, there's two bolts there um, that he's tightening down. Those are your uh, mid clamp bolts. And he's just getting these a little bit snug and then we're gonna torque them down to specs. And he's moving up top there to that one, same size and just one bolt. And he's gonna snug that one down too before we torque it. That's your top clamp there. All right, so just going in with his torque wrench and it's the same for the top clamp and the two bolts at the mid clamp and it's 14 to 18 foot pounds is what he's putting on those got that one and he'll go torque the two mid clamp bolts and we're going back in with the uh right fork and we're going to do everything exactly the same and torque things down get everything lined up and of course now we're going to go back on and get the fender into place and it definitely helps to have a partner for this too uh, one guy can hold it in place because there are the four bolts both sides front and back of the forks there and we'll get these bolts all finger started and with this quarter inch hex head wrench there he's going to go ahead and go around this fender both sides and just get these snug down we're not going to torque these all right and of course back up with our front wheel do make sure that you're putting this on correctly there's arrows on it in the direction that it turns you don't want to put it on backwards all right and just to speed this up we're going to work together putting this front wheel back on and uh, don't forget that you've got the axle we put a little anti-seize grease on it so it comes off easier next time and then that goes through and then of course on the right side there's a spacer and uh, it's got machine grooves in it that goes to the outside of the bike. It goes in between the fork and the wheel. And then as we pop the axle through, um, of course, between the left fork and the wheel goes the ABS speed sensor. And then the, we can slide the axle all the way through. All right, don't forget your stock washer goes on first and then your uh, front axle nut. All right, and then don't forget your stock bolt there. That is your pinch bolt that uh, it's a safety mechanism that pinches your axle from the other side, just in case you did lose your axle nut or it loosened up. And with a six millimeter hex head, he's gonna go ahead and torque this pinch bolt down to 18 to 22 foot pounds. There we go. On the torque wrench there, he's gonna torque this down 70 to 75 foot pounds is what the front axle nut calls for. There we go. All right, so we're gonna go back on with the both uh, brake calipers there. Just make sure you spread the brake pad plates apart so they fit over your rotor. You can use a screwdriver. Uh, just take care not to mar them up. Okay, this left side uh, brake caliper, now that the uh, cheek plates are spread apart, you can fit it up over the rotor there. And of course, line the two bolt holes up there. All right, with this caliper back in place over the rotor, he can start lining things up. Don't forget there's an additional plate on the left side. That's a stock bolt and washer. And that little uh, plate there is to guide your ABS sensor wire and hold it. So he's getting that all squared away. And then he can go in with his stock bottom bolt and washer. And then he'll follow it up here with his 10 millimeter 12 point socket on those brake caliper bolts. And he's just getting those snug down. And he'll do the same install on the other side minus the ABS wire.
All right, and he's uh, just putting that lower dash panel back in place there. Just make sure that whatever wires you unplugged can vary, whether it's a street glide or an ultra, but uh, plug everything back in the way it came out and he'll get that position into place there. And don't forget you have two bolts left and right side that he's getting started there. And those are Torx T27. And just moving around to the left side there, getting the hole lined up and he'll get that one in there and snug down. All right, we're gonna put the ignition back together. First, you take your collar and it's got two nipples on it there. They slide down into the channels there. And then I go on with his uh, threaded collar there. It's actually a nut, so to speak. And it threads right over the top there. And then I'll take his channel locks and just barely a snug here. You don't have to do much. All right, so he's gonna go back on with his ignition, put the spring over the shaft there. Now, remember we took this out in the fork lock position. You wanna go in very gently and uh, back in the four clock position, feeling for the channels there, try not to turn it. Um, and he's feeling for it there and back into place. And now he can go ahead, he's got his key and he's gonna push down on that and turn clockwise and it locks that. You'll hear it lock and snap into place. All right, and he's just uh, getting his tank position back there. He'll kind of slide it on and try to line up those front two holes. All right, and he's just going in with his bolt there left front and there's one on the right front too and we're not going to tighten anything down yet uh, we got to line up the back holes but he'll go around to the right side and get that one started and just two bolts on the rear here of the tank left side and then he'll move over to the right side there and with his uh, wrench now torx t40 he can go ahead and get these rear ones snugged all the way down. And with the rear ones tightened, you can go ahead and go up front, left and right side, and get those snugged down too. And again, Torx T40. And don't forget your rubber cap that goes over the top of the front bolts there. And he's going to go ahead and hook up his fuel line. He's pulling up on the chrome collar there, pushing up on the black portion, and you heard it snap into place. All right, just going to get his uh, right side vent line, just fish it down through the right side of the bike there. Again, when this is stock, it is zip tied and uh, you can certainly put a zip tie on it if you want. And he'll move over to the other side here and there's that vent line that he'll pop back together there. And he's gonna go ahead and grab his gray plug there. Only goes one way, make sure it clicks together. And of course he can go back on with the seat here. This is my Harley heated hammock, so plugs into power underneath there. He'll slide that uh, rocket up, slide that front tongue in, get it positioned in the back there, and then he'll secure it down with our Rick Rack seat bolt in the Law Abiding Biker store. Link in the description below. All right, your journey's not done on the channel. I'm popping a couple videos on the screen here for you. Hopefully something useful or entertaining. Heck, maybe both. At any rate, when you're done watching videos, make sure you get out there and ride every chance you get by Colics. Peace.